We're here following the memorial of Dr. Christine King Ferris, where she is lying in state at the Georgia State Capitol. During the service, there will be remarks from many Georgia leaders, including Gail Davenport, District 44 State Senator, and United States Senator Reverend Dr. Raphael Warnock. There will also be a benediction imparted by Reverend Dr. Bernice A. King, Dr. Ferris's niece and civil rights activist. We're waiting for Governor Brian Kemp to give his remarks now. Good afternoon. I'm Vernon Jones, and I'm honored to be here today to be a part of this homegoing occasion for Christine King Ferris. Many of us have known her in many different ways, and we're here to pay tribute to the life and the legacy of Christine King Ferris. Mrs. Ferris was a daughter. She was a sister, she was an aunt, she was a mother, she was a grandmother, she was a scholar, well-educated, and although she walked with kings, she always kept a common touch. I'm living proof of that. And so, to the family of Christine King Ferris and Angela, her daughter, to Isaac, her son, and to Lilith Ferris, we call her the granddaughter. Thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of this very special historical occasion. She has touched the world. She has touched the hearts and minds of many. She's educated some of the best and the brightest that's gone on to achieve in subsequent life. And so, with that being said, I want to say to the governor of this great state of Georgia, Governor Brian Kemp, I want to thank you and the First Lady for opening your arms and your heart for this very special occasion. I think only a very few have lie in state in this rotunda. And I think maybe two of them, in terms of African Americans, I think maybe four total, but two in the history came under your watch. That says something about him, and it says something about his heart and how he feels about the people of this state. We have a number of speakers today, and I have the hard job. I'm going to try to keep everybody on a two to three minute time limit. I have a new Apple Watch, and it's working pretty well right now. I know there are a lot of dignitaries here, and after the opening prayer, I will acknowledge them. Um, and I know there are a lot of uh, those who who I may miss, but we're going to try to make sure we acknowledge those that are here. So at this time, let's have an opening prayer from the Honorable Tanya Anderson. Good afternoon. Let us pray. God, great God, you are worthy to receive honor and glory. Majesty, dominion, and power, it belongs to you. You are the all-wise God. You are the God of hope and the future. We thank you today for the life and legacy of Dr. Christine King Ferris. We thank you that she understood her purpose and you gave her the passion to fulfill it. We thank you for the time that you allowed us to learn from her leadership. We thank you for her friendship and her faithfulness to teach us to march on until victory is won. And now God, oh God, please comfort this family. Please comfort our community. Please heal this state and this land of America. Dr. King Ferris led with love toward justice, equity, 
equality and peace. I'm reminded of a scripture that when the saints left this earth to go home to glory, the writer Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So what, shall, what then shall we say to these things? Because God is for us, who can be against us? Death, where is your sting? Sting, where is your grave? Grave, where is your victory? Our God reigns forever with power. Our God reigns forever with wisdom. Our God reigns forever with love. We thank you as we celebrate Dr. King Ferris's life, her legacy, and her love. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father Jesus. And thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Now we will have remarks from the Honorable Minority Leader of the House of Representatives, Representative James Beverly. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Representative. Uh, I do want to say, as I introduce each and every speaker to come up, um, James Beverly is from Macon. He is the minority leader of this great state, and it was an honor to have you. I know you changed your flight to make it here, but this is so important, so thank you so much for being here. Good afternoon. Today we as Georgians come together to honor and pay tribute to Dr. Christine King Ferris, a visionary leader with a purpose. Dr. Christine King Ferris was a remarkable light upon this green earth. Big sister to Martin Luther and Alfred Daniel. Three kings, affectionately known as three peas in a pie. A big sister to two little brothers. Now how many of y'all have a, a big sister? One who stands in the shadows, keeping watch above her own, a big sister. Her eyes bore witness to so much, yet she never let go of the prize. The prize of freedom, the prize of justice, the prize of peace. Now, the opening salvo of this trinity could be written in 1963 when Martin Luther King would tell the world about his dream. A dream that kicked off three significant acts in this country. The Civil Rights Act of 1964, the Voting Rights Act of 1965, and the Fair Housing Act of 1968. The closing act could have been written in 1968 when bullets rang out and killed a king. But the Fair Housing Act of 1968 was signed Three men stood on the stage of the Olympics, fist to the air, saying, we refuse for you to deny our dignity. In a world, we want freedom. And Dr. King, Dr. King Ferris, resolved in keeping her brother's dream alive. When a governor, 55 years ago, closed the doors of opportunity and justice, when he compelled Georgia State workers to continue to work, and not mourn or acknowledge the death of our king. She epitomized being her brother's keeper. Her work as a Spelmanite afforded the opportunity for black women to learn from her grace, her brilliance, her poise, her determination. Her footwork in the movement charted a path for us all. And her brother transitioned, as, she, as he transitioned the rest of her family she was always the one to remind us of the dream. Pick it up 55 years later. I'll tell you a conversation I had a couple of weeks ago, and I hope the governor doesn't mind, and here's how it went. I called the governor on Monday. Three things could have happened. One, I could have went to voicemail. Two, the conversation could have been, hey man, what are you gonna do with this $16 billion surplus? Too soon? We'll do that next week. But the third thing actually happened is he picked up the phone and he said, leader. I said, governor. He said, what's going on? I said, well, you know, uh, Dr. King's big sister passed. He said, I know. What do you think? 
I said, why don't we have her lying state? He said, that's a great idea. This governor, 55 years later, a Republican governor, a black Democratic leader, came together and crystallized what was unity because of the King family. And now she lies in state. sense, I'll leave these words with you, a real sense, all men are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly, affects all, in, all of us indirectly. I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. And you can never be what you ought to be until I am what I ought to be. This is the interrelated structure of reality, Dr. Martin Luther King. And the big sister held that legacy together. So today, we honor a big sister. We understand that we are interrelated, tied to a single moment of destiny to honor the King family and the legacy that they have impressed upon us all. Dr. Ferris King, may your journey home be filled with grace, you showed us all. Thank you for holding this down as our anchor. Your memory will reign supreme in our hearts. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce my dear friend, Governor Brian Kemp. Thank you so much, Leader Beverly. I appreciate those kind words and appreciate so much your leadership and uh, just your desire to make good things happen in this building and certainly in this building today. But really, it is an honor for Marty and I to be with you as we take time to celebrate the life of Dr. Christine King Ferris, a beloved Georgian, a history maker, a devoted sister to one of Georgia's most celebrated sons, a proud community leader, a respected educator, and certainly a devoted wife, mother, and grandmother. To the King and Ferris families, to Isaac Newton Ferris King Jr., daughter Angela Ferris Watkins, granddaughter Ferris Christine Watkins, and the entire King Ferris family. And to all those who knew and loved this woman of grace, my family sends our deepest condolences and prayers on behalf of all Georgians. It is an honor to be with Senator Warnock, Leader Beverly, Senator Anderson, Senator Davenport, Representative Gilliard, Senator Orock, the Dean of the Senate, my former colleague, Senator Ed Harbison, Dean Smyrey, former Dean of the House, members of the General Assembly, dignitaries, and prominent citizens. Thank you all for being here today to help us honor Dr. Ferris King. As was noted, the first child and only daughter of Reverend Martin Luther King Sr. and Alberta Williams King, she had a profound impact on her brothers, as was mentioned, as all big sisters do. I would even venture to say that without her, the boy that would grow up to become a legendary civil rights leader, whose memory continues to inspire people around the world even today, would have had a different path in life. As an essential part of the King Center's founding and a familiar presence at the yearly ceremonies in this building and elsewhere honoring her brother, she also played an important role in preserving that memory for other generations. This solemn day holds unique symmetry for me and my family. 17 years ago, while I was serving as a state senator, many of us gathered in the same rotunda to commemorate the life and contributions of Coretta Scott King while she lay in state. At the time, then Governor Sonny Perdue remembered Miss King as gracious and a courageous woman, an inspiration to millions, and one of 
the most influential civil rights leaders of our time. He added that she was absolutely an anchor and support for her husband. Today we can say the same for Dr. King Ferris. She was a gracious and courageous woman, an inspiration to many, and one of the most influential civil rights leaders of her time who served as an important support for her family. As the last remaining immediate family linked to Dr. King from that generation, in many ways her passing represents the end of an incredibly significant chapter of our shared history as a state and a nation. As a teacher and an author, I'm sure she would be quick to remind us that the ending of a chapter is not the end of a story, but rather the beginning of the next chapter. It is in solemn, quiet moments like this that we are reminded of how the contributions and the legacy of people like Dr. Christine Ferris King live on after they do. Just as the memory of her parents, brothers, and others live on. Now that she is reunited with them in a better place, where prejudice and hate have no presence or influence, it is up to us to carry on her good work and to honor her by remaining strong, by standing in faith and in courage, by demonstrating gate, grace and generosity, and by loving others, even in difficult seasons or times of tragedy. May God bless her family and her enduring legacy in the great state that she called home. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Governor. Thank you so much. Uh, Representative Beverly, something interesting you said about a big sister. I have a big sister, too. And those of you who have a big sister, she can get you in trouble and she can get you out of trouble. That's the thing about a big sister, so I, I could identify that. And thank you, Representative Beverly, for uh, your work and getting this organized and getting the governor to work with you uh, for this family. That's important. And uh, Governor's f wife is at First Lady Marty Kemp. Y'all, let's give uh, Mrs. Kemp a round of applause. Thank Thank you, Mrs. Kemp, for being here as well. Thank you so much. At this time, we will have a music selection from Kimberly McKinney, saxophonist.
Thank you so much. Let me just acknowledge very quickly, too, the Honorable Rob Piss here, who's the chairman of the Fulton County Board of Commissioners. He had to leave. Okay. Well, we want to make sure that we did do that. At this time, we're going to hear from the Honorable Gail Davenport. Poised with grace and innately intelligent, our visionary leader, Dr. Willie Christine King Farris, had a caring and sharing spirit, always showing humility, compassion, and empathy for people everywhere. Dr. Farris was the epitome of excellence. She was a superb educator, a teacher of teachers. As my Spelman sister, I worked in the Alumni Association with her for over 30 years and found her to be a true jewel, imparting knowledge and wisdom to us as she did when we were students at Spelman College. I had the privilege of serving as a volunteer with her and Mrs. Coretta Scott King for over two decades on the Salute to Greatness Dinner Committee at the King Center. Mrs. Farris gave her all and expected excellence from us in return. She was indeed a woman of great strength, integrity, character, and conviction. Let's not forget that she was indeed fashionable and impeccably and stylishly dressed at all times. She had a strong abiding faith in God and demonstrated it through her generous contributions to her children, Angela and Isaac Jr., granddaughter of Farish Christine and other relatives, her church, Ebenezer Baptist, and the beloved community far and near. Dr. King always remembered the King family roots in Stockbridge, Georgia, and the lives of many her family touched in the surrounding areas because of the connection. We are grateful in the Clayton County community for her willingness to take time from her very busy schedule to participate in our local celebrations of the King Holiday Ecumenical Service, the celebration naming of the Martin Luther King Jr. Elementary School in Riverdale, Georgia, in our family celebrations. Our lives are better because of her courageous stand and work in the civil rights movement and tireless work at the King Center in keeping the legacy of her brother, Dr. King, on the hearts and minds of people worldwide. Today, I join other Georgians in commemorating Dr. Ferris's long and wonderful life, a life filled with service, compassion, and kindness. Thank you, Senator Davenport. At this time, we'll hear from the Honorable Carl Gillier, who's the chair of the Legislative Black Caucus from down in Pula, Georgia. I think that's his district. Savannah, the Savannah area, Richmond, no, Chatham County, Savannah area. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for being here today. Good afternoon. Langston Hughes wrote, hold on to dreams, for when dreams die, life is like a broken spell who cannot fly. This family, the Ferris family, the King family, and the Williams family, in 1983, when I came to Atlanta as a student at Morris Brown, took me in with open wings. The angel of justice has gained her wings. The angel and the matriarch of the King, Williams, and Ferris family has gained her wings. But more importantly, I'm reminded of the times that Uncle Isaac showed wings to my family. I'm reminded of the times that he took unselfishly coming to Savannah, Georgia to, to give us a word of encouragement. 
And more importantly, at this defining moment, I'm reminded that the King family has embraced us with open arms and open wings. But the scripture says, the race shall not be given to the swift, but the ones who will endure. And it says that we should believe in this parable of the scripture. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. To the king and Williams and Ferris family, wait, I say, upon the Lord. I will give you this on behalf of the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus. We are with you, and today we embrace you, for you have held us in your arms. And now the nation, we must hold you in our arms. We, we pray God's blessings upon this matriarch because she has flown into a new frontier, and now it is our time to walk in the light of what she has given us. The baton has been passed, and now the work begins. On behalf of the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus, our prayers are with you, and the wings are available. Thank you so much, Chairman Gilliard. I think there are a couple of others. Um, I know there are a number of pastors here. I saw Pastor Kenny Walker, who's here, and Supreme Court Judge, Judge Ellington. I think he was here as well. Uh, matter of fact, um, there are a number of legislators here. We all, I don't know everybody's name. I served with some of you, some of you I did not. If you just raise your hand, there are a number of legislators that are here um, from the Georgia General Assembly. So thank you all so much for being here. At this time, we hear from the Honorable Nan Rogan, ORAC. Good afternoon, and I'll add my welcome to all of you who have come today to join us in reflecting on the life and legacy of Dr. Christine King Ferris. I want to offer my deepest condolences to the family and the extended family uh, of one of Georgia's premier families of multiple generations, to the Williams family, the King family, the Ferris family. Uh, we come today to share with you as you mourn the passing of the matriarch of this great family. Dr. Willie Christine King Ferris was a woman who made an indelible mark. We've heard many comments to that effect already. Today, as we celebrate her with her body lying in state here in the Georgia State Capitol, we're seeing truly one of the highest honors conferred by our state as a ritual of public mourning to recognize outstanding Georgians. She is in those ranks. And I'm humbled myself to take part in memorializing her legacy. Uh, Dr. Ferris was born into a family with generations of leadership in the religious and civic life of the African American community and the broader community at large. As the older sister of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., she was actively at his side throughout his life from the time of his birth, a life so tragically cut short. She was a true sister to his widow, Coretta Scott King, and the matriarch for the next family generation of leaders in the tradition of the Williams, King, and Ferris families. And actually, she is, again, one of a long line of the legions of African American leaders across the entirety of this nation's history. As a woman of vision, tenacity, and commitment, the life's work of Dr. King Ferris reflected her family's values of deep faith and enduring service. She found the strength, she found the strength to meet unspeakable tragedy after tragedy. She met those tragedies with resilience and grace beyond belief. Bravery and fortitude were lifelong qualities that history required of her to call upon again and again. Her unshakable faith armed her to persevere 
across almost a century here in Georgia. She spent 48 years as a dedicated professor to the young women of Spelman, where she was the longest serving member of the faculty at that revered HBCU institution of higher learning for young women. Dr. Willie Christine King Ferris joins giants in receiving Georgia's highest honor, an honor lying in state here at the Capitol that was formerly racially exclusive, as we all know. Today, Dr. King Ferris joins Congressman John Lewis, Judge Horace Ward, Coretta Scott King among the growing contingent of African Americans taking their rightful place here and honoring Georgia's history and our nation's history. We want to thank the governor for opening the Capitol Day for this uh, ceremony. Very much, very much earned. The lifetime work of Dr. King Ferris was marked by her unceasing commitment to work tirelessly for excellence in higher education for all, marked by her resolve to stay on the battlefield to secure true justice and full equality across our land. Uh, I'd like to add that everything Dr. King Ferris did was to serve the higher purpose of being on this earth in service of humanity. Her service was never self-serving. Her service was never self-aggrandizement. Her service was to fill the highest calling, a calling that her family upheld and reflected and continues to reflect today. Her brother famously said, uh, Dr. King, the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Dr. Christine King Ferris truly spent her lifetime bending that arc. Let us pause and take note of the somber moment and look forward to future generations of leaders such as Dr. King Ferris, who will stand tall and serve all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to probably have to deviate just a second here. On the program, the benediction is supposed to be given by the Reverend Bernie King. She's not available today. And we have two, we're going to have a substitute, he probably doesn't know it, but River One is going to be doing the benediction as well. So although he's the next speaker, we're going to try to, we're going to consolidate. We're going to have you to come up and you can, um, you can talk. Actually, if I can get you to hold, we're going to let Isaac come up first, and then you come up, and then you can give the benediction. Um, so thank you for indulging. So Isaac Newton Ferris, my friend, uh, Mrs. Ferris' son, the big brother, uh, thank you so much for allowing the public to be able to share your mom. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. He'll be addressing the family. Angel's here. Angel's the quieter one. Isaac can talk, so he loves to talk, so, so we'll put Isaac and not Angela. But Angela, she's a little sister, but she can, she's, she's powerful. Trust me, she can talk. Just ask Spelman students. She can talk. <laughs> trust me. <clears throat> and trust me, she's my little sister, but the way she talks to me sometimes, she's my big sister. She can talk. Okay. <clears throat> Thank all of you all for being here today. Thank the representatives, House of Representatives that are here, the State Senate. Thank you for being here. Thank you, uh, Mr. Leader, for reaching out to the governor. Thank you, Vernon. I, I know you played a part in having this happen. Um, this is a great state, and in this great state, uh, unlike a lot of some of the other 50 states, uh, Georgia has a powerful governor regardless of who that governor is. 
the, 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 the Georgia governor is so powerful in Georgia that it wasn't until 1975 uh, during the administration of former George Busby that we decided, okay, we can let a governor run for re-election because the governor is so powerful here. I make this point to thank you, Governor Kemp, because I know with all the enthusiasm, with, with all of the justifications, um, Angela, Ferris, and I could, could keep you here until tomorrow talking about personally why we feel that, that this should happen. But I want to thank you, Governor, because what you have done by allowing this to happen, you've, you've done two things. One, you have allowed my mother to go out in the way that we have been raised and to perform the service that we have been chartered and, and raised and, and, and bred to do. Some of you have heard me talk about the fact that the Williams King family of, uh, are fourth generation Atlantans, but we're fifth generation Georgians. It started with a slave, Willie Williams, who lived half of his life as a slave and, and half as a free man, but in his capacity as a slave, and as a free man, he, was, he started what could be called the family business. He was a crude preacher. He didn't have the education. He didn't have the luxury of attending seminary. But he gave inspiration to the slaves, and, and then after they gained their freedom, he continued to give inspiration, and he continued to give leadership. And he's the father of Reverend A.D. Williams that found his way here to Atlanta and, and led the fight for the first black high school here. The same guy that took in an uneducated guy that walked to, to Atlanta from Stockbridge with the one pair of shoes he had on his shoulders because he didn't want to wear them out. So he came to Atlanta barefoot and uneducated and and... Adam Daniel Williams saw something in Mike King, and he took him in and got him re-educated. And I mention Mike King because there is not, it's not a coincidence that the greatest religious leader of the 20th century shares the same name of the greatest religious leader of the 16th century, Martin Luther. And Martin Luther King Jr. didn't go away to Boston and get his PhD and come back home and say, hey, I want to be named Martin Luther King Jr. No, it was Mike King who traveled to Germany before Martin Luther King Jr. could read or write and learned about Martin Luther and came back to Atlanta and said, son, we're no longer Mike King, we're Martin Luther King. And I mention all of this because the second thing that you're doing here, Governor, is that we are honoring Georgia history here today. This goes beyond my mother. This is Georgia history, not Georgia black history, not Georgia democratic history, not Georgia Republican history. This is Georgia history. <laughs> five generations of it, home here in Georgia. I mean, people talk about Georgia one time being the capital of the Confederacy, but Georgia notes it five generations here because it didn't start with Martin Luther King Jr. Notes it five generations here that has impacted the world. Georgia did that. We've had 20 other Nobel Peace Prize Americans to be awarded. To my knowledge, no other state has produced two, as Georgia has, Martin Luther King Jr. and Jimmy Carter. This is a great state, a great state. 
So, Governor, what you are doing here today is honoring Georgia history. And thank you for that. And as I mentioned earlier, thank you for also allowing her to go out in the way, in the most appropriate way. I know that y'all go back and forth under this gold dome and their differences, as there should be. This is a democracy after all. And we're all entitled to our opinions and our thoughts on what should happen. But things like this show us that we can come together and figure it out. And that's what mother would be most happy about. She was a humble woman and she didn't require a lot of attention and a lot of showering. But what she did require is to live a committed life, serving others. That's what we've been bred to do. And that's what we do in the Williams King family, service. And so this is an act of service and it's also an act to honor Georgia history. Not just Williams King family history, but Georgia history. Georgia history that has impacted the world. And Governor, thank you for recognizing that and doing the right thing. We will always be grateful for you for that. And thank all of you for being here to share in this moment with us. God bless you all. Thank you, Isaac, so much for those words. It is Georgia's history. At this time, I want to say we're going to introduce the next guest, who is the Honorable Raphael Warnock, and immediately after he gives the benediction, I'm going to come back up for some announcements and we're going to close out. But these announcements are important so you know the remaining services that, that are going to be taking place leading right up until the funeral. So at this time, you all join me in, in welcoming the Honorable Raphael Warnock. As I listen to Brother Isaac speak in such glowing terms about our great state of Georgia, I was wondering if he was getting ready to make an announcement. <laughs> and when she shall die, take her and cut her into little stars. She shall make the face of heaven so fine that all the earth shall grow in love with night and pay no worship to the garish sun. Here lies a great daughter of a great state. And Georgia is better because she passed our way. It is, it is appropriate, it is right. It is fitting for her to be here. Willie Christine King Farris born a colored girl in the 1920s in the segregated South saw the arc of change in our state and in our nation. She knew in her heart of hearts how great we are at our best and how great we could become. She was born in a family of faith, shaped and nurtured by parents and grandparents who passed that faith on to her. I want you to think about 
this woman born in 1927. She was shaped not only by Georgia, but by the faith of Ebenezer Baptist Church, America's Freedom Church. Her grandfather, A.D. Williams, pushed forward a bond referendum that created the first public black school or public high school for black children. The Booker T. Washington School exists because of the freedom fighting faith that comes out of the Ebenezer Church. She attended the school that her grandfather helped to create through his bold activism in the 1920s. And then in 1935, her father, Daddy King, led a voting rights struggle in the heart of the South. We celebrate rightly what Dr. King did in 1965, fighting for voting rights, passing for voting rights law. But Dr. Daddy King was fighting for voting rights in 1935. And he fought for the equalization of black teachers' salaries. The commitment, the understanding that all of our children, red, yellow, brown, black, and white, were all precious in God's sight. She saw and witnessed the, the arc of Georgia and American history. Georgia had a senator when she was born. who, when Brown versus Board of Education was passed, delivered the Southern Manifesto to the Senate, speaking out against integration. She was always on the right side of our complicated story. And then Georgia had another senator who was very effective, brought a lot back to our state. But he said, we love the Negro in his place, and his place is at the back door. Well, because of the faith of people like her, I now sit in his seat, and she's lying in state in the Georgia Capitol. I am...
red, yellow, brown, black, and white. We have been summoned here by the great spirit, the Christine King Fathers. Amen. You fought a good fight. Yes. You kept the faith. Yes. Henceforth is laid up for you. Crown of righteousness. Yes. Not only to you, but to all those who love the Lord's appearance. So sleep well, Queen Mother. didn't go out till the preacher stood up. <laughs> Let us pray. And I saw a great multitude of men and women, boys and girls, gathered together, shoulder to shoulder. They were diverse and variegated in their humanity. They held from every corner of the globe, yet they looked into each other's eyes and they were unafraid. They were not afraid. And so I said to the angel standing there, what is this? And the angel answered, this is the kingdom of God imbued with love and justice. And so I asked, where is this? And the answer came, it exists already in the hearts of those who have the courage to believe and fight. And so I asked, when is this? And the angel answered, when we learn the simple art of loving one another as sisters and brothers, and so, gracious God, teach us to love one another and impress upon our hearts that justice, justice is what love looks like in public. We are encouraged by the witness, the words, the quiet strength of Christine King Farris who tutored not only generations of Spelman women, but in a real sense, was a teacher to so many. And she taught one last lesson. She taught us how to die. With her eyes lifted up to the hills, from whence comes our help. Our help comes from the Lord. Help us to keep the faith to keep fighting, to love one another. This we ask in the name of the God who loves us into freedom and frees us into loving. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Okay, um, let me just, as we begin to close out, one of the Georgia's tallest pines has fallen. Mother Christine King Ferris, we honor you. We thank you for the time. And we thank you for all you've done for not only this state, but this great country and the world. At this time, there, there are going to be a couple of more events. If you all, who, for anyone who didn't make today's service, there's going to be two more services tomorrow at Ebenezer Baptist Church. She was lying response from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And at 6 p.m. is the viewing. Then on Sunday, the service will start at 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. where she'll be lying in response. 
and the celebration of life will start at 5 p.m. Am I correct? Did I get that right, anyone? And we want to acknowledge and thank all those who worked to make this happen. Obviously, the director from Facilities Management, the state of Georgia, uh, those who worked on the committee, also to Willie Watkins Funeral Home. Uh, Mr. Watkins, we're going to take lead from you here. How do you want to do this? Do you want the family to do one more uh, stopping at and, and paying tribute and then escort it out and let everyone wait for them to get there first and then others can start the process then? And it is going to be here until, I think, 7 p.m. Is that correct? So if there are no more announcements, if you all will allow uh, the family to do one more bowing to, to Mrs. Ferris, and as they head out, then others can come and follow suit. We want to thank everybody, all the speakers, all those who attended today. Thank you very much.